Amen. Thank you, Jack. Our opening prayer is one of my favorites, the prayer of St. Francis. So I invite you to arise in body or in spirit as we pray together the prayer of St. Francis. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is gladness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able for our hymn of gathering, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, which can be found on page 384 in the hymnal or on the words on the screen. Let us sing together. invite you to remain standing as we affirm our faith together this morning with Psalm 23 as our creed. Christians, what do you believe? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You may be seated.
for our prayer this morning, you will hear this refrain, where the spirit of the Lord is, and would you please respond, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let us pray. God of Jubilee, of redemption, of freedom, your love for all creation is made real in the liberation of all things through Jesus Christ. Through sacrificial love on a cross, the chains of sin and death have been cut. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Lord, we are in need of your freeing grace. We are bound by so many things, bound by the pressure to be someone we are not, bound by the pull and sway of power and control, bound by the dread of catastrophe in our world of war and division, bound by the whispers and wails of our minds that tell us lies about ourselves and our reality, bound by the jealous anger that we are not getting what we deserve or that others have gotten what they don't deserve. For this and so much more, we are in desperate need of your grace and your mercy. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Unshackle us, God. Loosen the grips of sin, of all that separates us from your love, from each other, from the earth, and from our deepest self. And forgive us for the binding and controlling that we have done to others, to the earth, to ourselves. Help us to see that freedom is not isolated, that the freedom of ourselves is found in the freedom of each other. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. People of God, what is keeping you shackled and bound today? What is keeping you from the love and grace and freedom found in Christ. I invite you to name it now. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. People of God, where are you keeping a chain or bond over someone or something in your life? What will help you loosen your grip of control? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Liberate us, God. Save us so that we might experience true jubilee, a time of freedom and justice and hope and joy. Grant in us your freeing grace so that we might become a people who show grace and mercy freely in our community and our world. May we rest in the promise of liberation, God, the saving work of your son, Jesus Christ, as we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will hear a ministry update from Donna Laval about our leadership council. Please welcome Donna. Good morning, everybody. It was with great joy that we heard the announcement two weeks ago that Lisa and Macon will be with us for another year. Coronado has been blessed to have them shepherd us into becoming a vibrant, spirit-filled family rooted in God's love, growing in Christ, and engaging with service and compassion. We have also been blessed to have had a phenomenal leadership council. The council is made up of three teams. Each team ideally consists of six to nine members. These folks are the decision-making body of our congregation for most matters. The administrative team focuses on our church buildings and campus, finances, human resources, and policy work. The, admin, the vision team focuses on the big picture, work of cultivating church culture, discerning ministry objectives and initiatives, and casting vision and direction for the life of our congregation. The guide team focuses on guiding folks to membership, discipleship, and service pathways and identifying and training leaders within our church community. And that's really what this message is all about today. We are extending an invitation to all of you who are interested in serving on the 2024 Leadership Council. We welcome you to submit your candidacy forms. There are forms at the back of the church, in the Connect Center, and at the front office. They look like that. The deadline to return the form to the church office is July 23rd. We are blessed to have many folks in our church with amazing talents. I have found that it is a true pleasure for me to have met so many of you. We have a source, a score of other teams to join. If you don't want to be with the Leadership Council, we have lots of other teams you can join. We have the mission team, technology, hospitality, stewardship, to name just a few. I encourage you to get involved in one of them or the Leadership Council. You'll be glad you did. Thank you, Donna. At this time, we invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. Merciful and loving God, we thank you for welcoming us into your family. We thank you for inviting us to join you in your saving work. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and reveal our calling in this season. Give us glad and generous hearts to fund your saving work. Bless and multiply this offering that through it many may come to know you, many may come to know their calling, and many may be helped. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. What a great song. Uh, now would be a great time for you to greet those uh, that are near you, to say hello, peace be with you, God bless you. Uh, give a good wave. Hello, folk online. Hello, tech team. Hello, folk in the balcony. Hello, folk in the chairs. Peace be with you, folk in the pew. Bless you, choir. Welcome home, Macon. Hello. Hello. Uh, today we are continuing our sermon series called The Gift of Sabbath. And I would invite you to take the Bible you brought with you. Uh, maybe it's on a phone, tablet, maybe you've got a paper Bible. Uh, there's also Bibles near you in the pew. I invite you to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Uh, Deuteronomy is uh, near the front of a paper Bible and, uh, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, fifth book. So you will find it near the front if you're using a paper Bible. And we're going to be in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, uh, number five, Deuteronomy number five. Okay, so as you are finding that, uh, turn to your neighbor and answer this question. What is the difference between a hero and a villain? What is the difference between a hero and a villain? Pretty easy answer, you know. <laughs> What does that mean to you? Difference between a hero and a villain. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Macon said, well, I guess good and evil, but it's kind of subjective. <laughs> well done, theologian, well done. Okay, so uh, I came across uh, this amazing, amazing quote from Donald Miller about um, uh, the difference between a hero and a villain. And uh, Donald Miller is an author, he's a marketing expert, and he mainly writes about the power of story. The power of story. And so he says this, he said, villains and heroes actually have the exact same backstory. And the backstory is pain. The villain says, the world hurt me, I'm going to hurt it back. The hero says, the world hurt me. I'm not going to let this happen to anyone else. It's how you decide to react to the pain that causes you to be a villain or a hero. And so, which are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just went, ooh! <laughs> Are you the villain or the hero? Bit of both. And the, here's the more important question. Which do you want to be? And everybody goes, oh! <laughs> right? Right? We want to be the hero. We want to be the hero. And so villains and heroes are key to us understanding why and how we practice the Sabbath. Let's dive into that. First of all, a reminder of what is Sabbath. Let's all read the definition together. A day set apart for the holy blessing of rest. Exactly. And so we find uh, this definition by looking at the Ten Commandments, by looking at the Fourth Commandment. Uh, we've been looking at the commandment in Exodus, now we're going to look at the commandment in Deuteronomy. There are several lists of the Ten Commandments in Scripture, and so here's another one. Deuteronomy chapter 5, and we're going to be begin at the fourth commandment, which is verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. The commandment could have stopped right there, right? But it didn't. It goes on. Back to verse 13. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave, or your ox, or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave, and that whole laundry list that was above it, 
may rest as well as you. This was a radical idea in the ancient world. And it's pretty much a radical idea today, right? That's so nice, right? It's so nice. Everybody's going to get a day of rest. It's so nice. It's so nice. Oh, it's deeper than that. Deeper than nice, right? It's holy. The commandment could have stopped there, right? Lovely laundry list. Nope, it doesn't. Verse 15, remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. There's the pain. Remember the pain. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath. God says, remember who you were before you found freedom, right? And so for the folks back in, in this time period, we're talking about slavery to Pharaoh, right, in Egypt. You know, remember who you are before you found freedom. For us, we say, remember who you are before you found freedom in Christ. Remember the pain of slavery to sin and death. Remember the pain of slavery to shame and guilt. Remember the pain of slavery to work. And now that you have freedom, pass it on. Pass on the forgiveness and the grace. Pass on the belonging. Pass on Sabbath. Break the cycle of work with no rest. I did a little math around this. Here we go. There are 52 weeks in a year. So if you do not Sabbath, that means 52 additional days of work. Multiply those 52 days by an average lifespan of 70 years. You get 3,640 days. That is 10 years of extra work. Anybody want that? <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Make it says hard pass. Right. None of us, none of us want that. And so we don't want it for ourselves, and so we love our neighbor as ourself, whatever that neighbor looks like is, animal, vegetable, mineral, right? We love our, our neighbor as ourself, because we remember the pain. We remember the pain that slaves don't rest. The blessing of Sabbath is liberation. The Hebrew folk, our spiritual ancestors, experienced 20 generations of slavery in Egypt. 20 generations. As they journey with God through the wilderness in this in this in-between time between slavery and the promised land, they learn what it means to live as a free people, to live as a liberated people. Freedom from false gods, freedom from destructive choices of dishonoring others, of murder and adultery and stealing and lying and envy, and freedom from slavery to work. Work is no longer our Pharaoh. Work is not our God. And so, the Sabbath commandment the f is the fourth commandment. It is the longest commandment. And it is the hinge commandment. Over and over again in the scriptures, we see cross-shaped lives. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Right? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And you get the idea, right? The Ten Commandments are also cross-shaped. The first three have to do with our relationship with God with respect of God and honoring God, right? 
the last have to do with how we treat one another. And the fourth commandment is the hinge. Whoop. And so it's not just about our relationship with God. It is also about our relationship with God, our relationship with others, our relationship with our true selves, our relationship with the earth. It is also the only commandment to include the word remember. Remember. And so we remember what life was like before we became followers of Jesus Christ, before we found forgiveness and grace and hope and healing, and right? We remember that and we say, I don't want anyone else to have to live that way, to go through that. We remember the pain and the slavery so that others don't have to experience it. And so we remember, but we also remember. We also become instruments of healing and wholeness and grace and forgiveness and hope. Salvation means wholeness. And when things are fractured and lives are fractured, there is wholeness in God. And part of bringing about wholeness is Sabbath keeping. And so we remember who we are. We practice healthy relationship with work and a healthy relationship with rest. Not just for us, but for all. And so we choose by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to be heroes. We choose to protect the holy blessing of rest for the needy and for the displaced and for the powerless, for minimum wage workers and for the wealthy, for immigrants and children and persons of all genders and those who believe and those who do not. We protect it because it's not just about me and God. It is about me and God and others and the earth. It is about liberation for all. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for the blessing of your good news that you came to proclaim release to captives, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of God's favor. And so we pray that you would show us how to live this truth, to live this truth for all, to join you in release, to join you in rest, to join you in recovery and redemption. Show us the way. We ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Our, our kids are supposed to be singing this morning. So Megan's going to go get them. <laughs> so talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> What does Sabbath look like for you? No. Oh, thank you, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how does a pastor Sabbath? Oh, great. I love when I get theological questions in the middle of worship. 
Right. So, but this is a great question. What, what happens for folks who work on the Sabbath, right? Clergy work on the Sabbath. So um, we, we just pick a different day. So it, it's, not, it's not, you know, has to be on Sunday. It, it's about what is, what day? What day are you resting? And, there, and there's this beautiful idea that, because I'm, I'm learning about this too. I'm, I'm learning how to do this better. And uh, so there's this idea that Sabbath is about, um, about doing what fills you up what restores your soul, what brings grace and joy to your soul. Um, and, and so, right, and so Donna, Donna says, well, well, your grandbaby Lily does. And I'm like, oh yes, oh yes. So what, you know, what brings, what brings grace and joy to your soul? What fills you up? Um, what feels like play? Right? What feels like play. And here are the kids. Let's welcome them. Would you please stand as you're able as we sing, I am thine, O Lord, number 419.
People of God, what is our mission? Building community rooted in God's love, inviting all to grow in Christ, engaging with service and compassion. Friends, we hope that you will stick around for a little bit, that you'll head into the courtyard, have something to eat, have something to drink, have a great conversation with each other. And so go now in peace, go to love, go to serve, go to work, go to rest, go to share the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.